all, thanks once again for your time. Uh, currently, we are four of us, four mentees together here. A few of them have also mentioned they couldn't join because their schedule has been again changed due to the lockdown and new session and etc. So some will just appear, I guess, as we go. They are still coming, but. Um, just wanted to express how grateful I am. Hi, Alicia. Mariana, you just um, arrived, but we were inviting everyone to just come on board. And it's so good to see you all, actually. So I will try to stay grounded and actually very um, soon you mute myself so that we really start the QA session. And when we were preparing yesterday, Carol, you told me about your practice of self-empathy and probably we can come back to it. But um, I would suggest that we just take a few minutes as a kind of um, small power nap uh, or just grounded time for everyone so that first it will be useful to me because of the stress before. I know it's the middle of the day for all of you and can be a very, very long day uh, for some of you. So just as a practice of test empathy to ground ourselves and to have a kind of poor nap. So you can be either just meditating or sleeping for a few seconds if you manage to. And um, normally it's 10 to 20 minutes of poor nap, right? But obviously we're not going to shoot for this. But I'm going to set the, the time out for three, five minutes. What do you think, Carol? What, what do you need? Oh, uh, I think uh, it's a cool night. <laughs> obviously, well, first of all, welcome everybody, and so happy to be here with you. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, not not more than five minutes, just to leave the space and the floor to everybody if they want, uh, whoever wants to ask questions, because that's uh, that's, that's the purpose today. So just, uh, yeah, just to land and and ground ourselves. This is perfect. Yeah, perfect. So I'm gonna set it up. I may not close my eyes all the time because I'm the one admitting people in, but if you feel like closing your eyes for the three minutes that we are offering yourself, uh, feel free. it might not be the best tool in such a setting like online so I'm, I'm curious if you have other tools that you're using when you're helping people to land on your meeting or on their on their feet uh, as a matter of fact I use the micro technique of breathing so uh, it's it's pretty much similar it's like Okay, let's uh, let's uh, let, let's sit comfortably and let's breathe and let's stay focused on our breathing. And if my mind is wandering, let me bring it back to my breathing. So we do it for one minute or two. Uh, it's a really a micro technique which could be done also anywhere. As a matter of fact, it's one of the techniques to unplug uh, the amygdala and and get back and be aligned. It's yeah. quite important, as a matter of fact. I agree. It's, it can be very helpful, but I was wondering, as we were trying to practice this power nap, if guidance of breathing would not be uh, more helpful for everyone. But anyway, learning practice, and uh, good to hear you, your feedback. Um, today is a Q&A session, so I do have plenty of questions, but the, um, the session is made for you ladies. So does anyone would like to start with some questions? 
um, please feel free to unmute yourself and, and shoot <laughs> some questions to Carol. If you're here, it means you're interesting. So don't be shy. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I have a question. Um, I already wrote uh, this question to Carol last time. Uh, I don't know if it's really related to these trainings, but I think it's something that maybe you're aware of as well. I've seen, um, um, since I moved to Germany, I've seen that here there are a lot of uh, training uh, that deal with the slack fertig height. This is like a uh, quick, uh, quick response. And uh, my question is, uh, for me, these, uh, these uh, trainings are um, quite weird because I don't understand why the psychological movements in all these uh, uh, leadership uh, things uh, uh, give a lot of attention to, to, this, uh, to this topic. Uh, and uh, I wanted, I don't know if it's something really related to the German culture, because I know German people normally are not so uh, fighting people aggressive, and maybe they want to, in that way to show that they can uh, uh, have a reaction, or it is something that is in a, I mean, Germany is, has become a multicultural country, where, of course, everyone has a different way to react to problems and to activities. And maybe this is uh, uh, the way that in Germany, these psychological problems are solved. Okay, I, 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 uh, I may have missed the first uh, portion of your question, Alicia, so I did not quite understand the trainings, what type of trainings you were referring to in Germany? Because I missed that initial part. So. Okay, okay. Uh, I know in Germany, the, in German, they are called Schlagfertigkeit. Maybe okay. Katia, she's but German, she can why, help it. That's why I missed it. Okay. <laughs> And then, yes, sorry. Uh, yeah, and I know that uh, these training are very important. They belong also to the leadership uh, uh, training, to the self-development self training of people. Okay. I've seen that, uh, for my experience, that these kind of trainings uh, are mostly from uh, Germans in German literature. Okay. So, no, I haven't found any American or uh, French or Italian, I'm not aware that there are these kind of trainings, and I thought I wanted to have some uh, uh, information because I'm maybe you're working also with many multicultural teams in companies, or and you're aware about this training as well. Uh, so I I don't know what. It means uh, what the way you've qualified it in uh, in German. So, is it, it's a it's a training that is mixing psychology with the leadership uh, practices, or uh, what what is it exactly? So I can give you a proper answer, basically. Uh, uh, it's a training uh, uh, about conflict resolution when people okay. are in a I don't know in a company in the school, and uh, I don't know. I always I was always told as leader that, or as a simple person to find a negotiation. Yes. But these uh, uh, trainings had the feelings that they want to a bit uh, um, develop the ability in people to have a quick reaction to maybe some harsh uh, critics or harsh uh, uh, behavior from somebody else. And uh, for me, it's something that I know that they are, very, they are very popular here in Germany. There are many companies, many uh, psychological providers, uh, the Volkhochschule, that uh, deal with these things. And uh, for me, it's something new. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I wanted to, to know more because, uh, I, I mean, I know that as leader, uh, I... I, uh, from my own perspective, from what I've read from these uh, trainings, somehow they develop a bit aggress uh, a, an aggressive, a passive aggressive behavior with people. Okay. And for, for me, it's quite, uh, it was quite uh, weird because I know that uh, as leader or all the psychological movements try to find uh, in conflicts negoci negotiation with people. They never uh, lead people to have more conflict. And uh, 
uh, I wanted to know what uh, maybe you have experience because uh, uh, you have uh, uh, many experience in many countries. Uh, if uh, this kind of uh, trainings in leadership, in psychological uh, uh, views, in uh, self-development are also now popular, for instance, in the, Uni in the United States, in France, because in uh, Italy, I'm Italian, I never heard of this uh, training. And uh, uh, honestly speaking, uh, the way th that these training are made uh, make me a... a, a Uh, for me, are quite uh, extreme sometimes, mm -hmm. but uh, it, maybe there is a background that I don't get it, and I wanted to to understand. So maybe Katia, you're German, uh, you know something about it. Yeah, I can just speak or say that I really have no idea um, what you're talking about because I, I have an idea, but it's not I. Um, I don't uh, recognize this at university or so, but mm -hmm. maybe, uh, but I think it uh, maybe depend on the, um, the sector of uh, work you're working in, mm -hmm. like um, maybe in some more, um, some companies where there's more conflict or more um, hierarchy or um, fight again for the positions. Maybe there's something, uh, some training courses like that at university uh, where I work or at the sports sector. We have nothing like that. We have more this um, uh, emotional intelligence things and stuff. So okay. <laughs> maybe that depends on the... Um, Because I know, for instance, the Volkhochschule. Yes. Does, uh, ha, uh, they, deliver these, uh, they deliver these trainings okay. as well. And... Uh, I, I, uh, it's a. Uh, I have read the in the context of this training, and as I said, they don't promote uh, negotiation, but they say that uh, inst when, for instance, in the school, a child is pulled by somebody else, mm -hmm. instead of find, instead of saying, uh, you need to understand why the other child bullies you. Maybe he feels inferior. He has a family problem. They just say that uh, you need to learn to quick react in a in a quick way, in a snappy way. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it is a uh, uh, related. Uh, may, uh, It's a, a problem that in Germany is arise because normally uh, German people are not so I can I can I say aggressive, you know, and they just want to that uh, they learn to to deal with these uh, difficult situations, or it is something that uh, is uh, it's a new trend. So I okay. I thank you for all the explanation, Alicia. Um, I, I have a better understanding of what you were referring to. It is not something that I'm familiar with or uh, have seen in anything that is called developmental uh, coaching or a company uh, or anything like that. Um, what, what I would say is that um, driving the behavior uh, just to react and to snap back, uh, just to take in charge your territory and mark your, your limits and uh, your area is not exactly appealing to your uh, calling onto your emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is all about really, if somebody is bullying you or somebody is, is uh, coming and hitting hard on you, is not to say, okay, thank you, hit me back. That's not the idea neither. It's really say, okay, What is this creating with me? And how, what is it that I'm feeling here? I feel a lot of anger. What, how can I funnel this anger and make it something that's going to make me move and create something, a positive movement out of it? It's not wait for the next uh, thing to happen, but it, it's really be in a position to really feel what's happening within you. And then you are in a position to come in a much better reasonable way towards the person in front of you and disconnect this person from where she is. If you snap back, you are just creating the, the hamster wheel. I mean, I snap back and you snap back. So I don't know what is this uh, movement or this approach or whatever it is, 
but it's definitely not in line with uh, what emotional intelligence is all about. And this is not what's going to help you move along, on the other hand. So if you start developing this, uh, this, this posture of just snapping back to whatever happens, then you are always in a reactive mode and your emotions that are just like the raw emotions are driving you. So what do you f how do you funnel all this and how do you create the energy and the positive energy that's gonna take you further and open up the spectrum for you so you have a much better view of what's going on and you can address the issue in a, in a much better, uh, more appropriate way. So um, I don't know what this is, and maybe this is something that people feel that they are insecure and they want to feel like I have some strong stuff going on. I don't know, mm -hmm. uh, but I um, haven't heard of it, neither in, in France, the UK or the US, uh, that's for sure. Okay, because I I try to uh, to search in internet if there were some translations, because as as an Italian in Italy I'm Italian I never heard of these things. On the contrary, we try always to find the from this bad bad uh, situation to find something that is good. Uh, but I f I found that uh, these uh, trainings are very are getting more and more popular, and maybe there is a background that I'm not aware. And they are good. I mean, I don't. I, it's not because I'm not saying that they are, they are bad or they are good. But I, I wanted to under uh, to understand. That's why I posed. The, I, I put the question because maybe some people here uh, have more experience or they know the background in which these uh, trainings are held, and maybe they have their own uh, meaning. We will make some research. Like uh, what I suggest, Alicia, is that you just send me the exact mm -hmm. name by email <laughs> because I'm not sure I typed it down correctly when I was taking notes. And I will ask some of um, my contacts in Germany and just to have some look on what it is um, and, and try okay. to get Thank you. this understanding. Uh, no, no, okay, here, okay. But gonna give because it as I said, uh, for me it was quite uh, weird as well, but. Uh, Maybe there is some background that I'm not aware, and uh, they they somehow lead to something different because I know that that uh, these courses are also made by the Volkhochschule or some uh, other training providers, so they have some kind to some kind of uh, foundation. Thanks, Alicia. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Is there any other question? Hi, yeah, uh, mine, I think it's a, maybe a bit more generic. Um, you mentioned, uh, for example, how to, you know, that a, an anger, if that will be channeled in a specific way, then it can be helpful. So I was wondering, well, basically, let's say that uh, I am not, I heard obviously about emotional intelligence, but um, let's say it is like a very really beginner level. I only know kind of basics. I know that is useful, but that's all. And I was wondering if there is, you know, any kind of tools that we can use um, when we feel, um, I don't know, not emotion. Well, that that can help us to deal with the emotions, especially those negative ones. Um, you know, without maybe having so much knowledge as of an expert, is it or is it is there already something we can you know we can implement? Yes, um, yes, definitely. Uh, and this is what I was referring uh, to earlier on, which is the micro technique. Where, where, where I mean, when the first domain in in emotional intelligence is self awareness. So the more you are going to be self aware of what's going on within you, depending on the situation, what's going on and so on, and how you feel it. So the more you are vigilant as, what am I feeling in my body in this occurrence? Okay, this is what's coming up and I'm starting to feel the anger coming in and so on. So what am I going to do here? Am I going to let it overflow or am I going to take control here? So the micro technique, 
is a good way of cutting short what the amygdala is doing. You know, the amygdala is our uh, control tower that is there in our brain from very, very, very long time, but it's still there. And it's the one that says, ooh, danger, danger, danger. You need to, to fly, fight, or, uh, you know. So how am I going to disconnect that and, and bring it back into my PFC, my prefront, prefrontal cortex, which is my uh, control, my command center. This is where all the, 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 the bright thinking happens. So the micro technique is as soon as I feel something, I mean, obviously you, the more you're gonna do it, the more you are going to be uh, in a position to feel it coming up, you know? It's like, okay, when, when, I, when I'm starting, I feel like I'm gonna get really angry or upset. I know I feel something in my stomach or I feel something in, you know, my hands are starting to become different. Uh, it depends, everybody reacts somewhere. But the body is the first source of indication, like something is gonna happen. So as soon as, as I feel this coming up, it's like, what is it? What is this emotion and what is it linked to? I close my eyes. Sometimes what I do is I, physically I move myself so I step back or I step on the side it's just like I'm, I'm changing my position basically and I focus on my breathing and you don't have to do it for 10 minutes it's like you do it like for one minute and I'm and whatever comes into my mind I bring it back into my breathing and it's like I stay focused on my breathing and when you open up your eyes again well things have settled and now you are in a better position to put in motion your pre-pfc and now you can start reacting and acting on a situation so this is a very uh, easy technique to to put in practice and this is what daniel goldman called the micro techniques you know and it you can put it anywhere you're in a meeting somebody is really upsetting you Close your eyes. Uh, nobody will notice, by the way. I've done it on multiple occasions in meeting. Nobody noticed that you're closing your eyes and you're breathing and you're like, <laughs> so do it. And, uh, and if you're sitting on a chair in a meeting room, you, you can pull back uh, your chair a little bit from, uh, from, the, from the desk. It's again, this change of, uh, of position is also, is all, is also helpful to put, to put the perspective. Have I answered your question? Yes, you did. I think it's sounds easy to try. Um, it's hard to actually stay focused, I must say, for I guess someone who doesn't do it. But yeah, I'll give it a try. Thank you. It, it is also the micro technique to. Uh, this is what we do when uh, when you have you are uh, you're having hard time uh, concentrating. I invite you to use the micro technique again uh, because it brings back your focus where you need it to be. So uh, so maybe you're gonna do it more than one minute, but it is one of the techniques also if, if I mean, sometimes, you know, you're, you're working on something and you feel like it's really hard for you to stay focused and concentrated on what you're doing. Can we, you, you can use again, this micro technique and it's quite helpful as a matter of fact. Well, so I guess, yeah. Focus is another thing, you know, especially nowadays. So plenty of opportunities to try it out. <laughs> there have been a study actually that shows that just three cycle of breathing, like very focused on three cycles. So inhale, exhale, three times, already helps to bring back the focus. So when we don't, I would say definitely in, uh, in the anger management or whatever, it's much harder because there is so many things in, uh, happening in our brain and etc. But to practice it at different time of the day, just to train and feel the different level of focus and bringing back the ascension is already helpful, yes. uh, I would say. Another question, Ooh, losing my voice. <laughs>
If not, then I will, Mariana, I will get back to you, I think. And I will just ask it, and then we can take yours and see if it's similar. Um, actually, because of what you mentioned and the process you mentioned, Carol, um, at least for me, I know that one of my problems is also the emotional literature or understanding the different level of emotion. So I'm curious if you have any books or recommendations to actually understand the different emotion that we have, because that's something in our culture that we are not very rarely <laughs> thought of. Um, and in the process that you mentioned, being able to identify one emotion is key, but it can be very hard if you don't have the dictionary or the appropriate vocabulary. So. Well, I mean, yes, there's a wide variety of emotions, that's for sure. Um, and emotion are definitely all linked uh, to, to our brain and to neurosciences. There's one book that I like a lot. It's, uh, I, I need to find the, the title in, uh, in English. It's uh, Professor Richard Davidson who's, who wrote it. And it's um, The Emotional Life of Your Brain is the title. And it's quite a good book. Uh, it, it goes and it tells you about all the different types of the emotional types that are out there and how it's linked and um, how, it, how, how it occurs. And, and he's, he's obviously a doctor in neurosciences. So everything is linked back to all his research in neuroscience. He works very closely with Daniel Goldman. So, so he's, he's really working on neuroscience uh, in, in, in relation to emotional intelligence. So it's, um, I really recommend this book <clears throat> because it's gonna, it's gonna give you really, uh, an in-depth perspective of where, what are the emotions, where they're coming from and where they reside in, uh, in our brain. Uh, so, uh, I don't know if I'm answering your, your question here, Carol. We do. I mean, it could take the full webinar or whatever training, but I will have a look at the book. Thanks a lot. Mariana, you wanted to, to ask a question. And yeah, I mean, if anyone else has questions, obviously I'm free to give my slot. But I can... Sorry. Oh, maybe there's someone with a question. <laughs> no. Um, so I was wondering, I, I there is probably different, I, I don't know, can we kind of differentiate between female and male type of emotional intelligence or is it more in, up or down to individual types? I think in general, and we talk quite a lot here about gender equality, that women are perceived to be more emotional and this is still has a negative connotation, especially when we talk about decision-making uh, roles. And, um, so I was just wondering if, you know, there is something as a woman that we might actually benefit from, I don't know, either feeling emotions more or better or, you know, or maybe is there something we can um, learn from men um, or maybe this, this differentiation is, it, is actually does not find justification in science. Okay, um, so the gender differentiation in terms of emotion is uh, is more uh, is not rooted in uh, in the neurosciences uh, studies. So it's not because you are a woman or a male that uh, you, that th this is not the a scientific fact, right? This is more an injunction from the society, a cultural uh, injunction, basically. Uh, having said that, women are probably uh, more, uh, have a better capability to, to uh, intuitive capabilities. And at the same time, if, you, if you, you, you're talking about uh, uh, how you evolve in the in the society as it is today, 
women have all these cultural injunctions that are coming on them. And okay, I'm a, and from the other side, there's all the limiting beliefs that are there. So uh, am I really in my right spot to, to, to go ahead and express my intuition here and, and go with it? Um, so I think it's, it's not linked scientifically to your emotions or your, your brain. It's more, what is the, 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 um, the weight and the power of the cultural injunction that are there? And what are the self-limiting beliefs that women are putting on themselves as a matter of fact? And also I would say even men have their, their self-limiting belief because I truly believe that men could benefit a lot from what women can bring into the party and especially intuition. Men are not so much driven by their intuition, and I don't know why, but uh, and maybe this is the, the the weight of very strong uh, male uh, cultural injunction that uh, they receive uh, ever since they are babies and uh, they are brought uh, with uh, an archetype of how they should be and so on and so forth, because that's what is structuring uh, the way people feel and and think. It's not really. Uh, from uh, uh, a genetic way or uh, a scientific way, basically. Okay, so it is a stereotype, but very heavily ingrained in our culture. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> if you read the book I referred to, you will see that uh, there is no difference in gender. <laughs> At least for the emotions. <laughs> One else. Any questions? You're very quiet, ladies. Yeah. Is it the <laughs> the imposter syndrome or whatever stereotype in the mind? <laughs> Being quiet or just tired, maybe of, of the day. I'm also um, at the same time, so uh... yeah. You can you can use the chat if you prefer. Um, and while uh, I will see if there is any question coming up, I will raise one that was actually sent to me by Ivana, who could not attend today. So she was saying, isn't it easy to? So she was referring to the first webinar about the positive office. And asking, isn't it easy to say, be positive, uh, think positive? And for example, if my boss shot at me with no reason, no. or uh, if my coworker- Can you get closer? Because I can't hear you well. Can you get closer here? That's yeah. The number of it. Can you see me? <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna, is it better? Yes. Yeah. So she was wondering if it's not too easy to say be positive or think positive and taking a few examples uh, looking for this outlook and um, positive outlook. So for example, if uh, my boss shot at me with no reason or if my co-workers dis disrespect me with no reason, there is not much to be positive about. Uh, where is the positive outlook in such examples? Okay, yes, it's a, it's a good question. So uh, the positive outlook, you need to go find it, obviously, and it's, it's a way of training your brain. Uh, obviously, when you get your boss who's shouting uh, at you, it's totally unpleasant. It's, you don't want this to happen, right? Uh, so the, the first reaction that's gonna happen is either we're gonna shut off because say, okay, uh, the, I'm being, uh, I mean, this guy is aggressive with me and this is not okay with me. That's one reaction, but it's a reaction that is not helpful because once we've done that, we, we are staying with our resentment and what we're feeling and this is gonna keep moving on into our brain. So, we're not gonna fight with the person. The person has, the issue is with the person, it's not with us. 
So a couple of things. First of all, uh, although it may seem that it is personal, it is not personal. This person is reacting because he doesn't know how to react. And he is insecure, as a matter of fact. He is stressed because his boss is probably putting stress on him and he wants something to be done in a way that is whatever. Uh, his brain is shut off at, the, at this minute because I need this done, it's not done, you are useless, da 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 da, whatever, which might be the case. So that, that he's saying those things. But at the end of the day, he's reacting out of his own stress. So already he's not in, a, in, in the right position. Having said that, I'm receiving this. Uh, so first thing that I want to say to myself, this is not personal. This guy is under pressure and he is expressing his pressure on me. Now, it may seem like, okay, well, well, well come on. <laughs> it's not acceptable to, to think this way. I agree, but it's, it's not for him that you're thinking this. It's, it is you that are getting yourself grounded. It's like you, your starting point say, well, first of all, this is not personal. It's all about him because he is stressed out and he, he's not in a position to express clearly what he really needs and what he wants me to achieve. So once you have put that in place, then you can then go back to what, what do you feel and sit down and say, okay, what is it that he needs in reality? You know, it's not about me, that something is wrong. He has a need, he's not expressing it well. Let me step back and try to understand the situation. And by doing this, you're already disconnecting yourself from really that emotion that is coming up from you. It's like, I'm gonna hit him uh, if he keeps talking to me like this. So you, you're sitting and you're, you, you're trying, you, you're, looking at things from a different perspective. And just by doing this, this is already a positive perspective. So the positive perspective is not to say, oh yes, happy days, it's Mickey Mouse world and everything is happy and da da da. That's not exactly what it's all about. It's, it's just being in a position not to immediately uh, switch in with your emotion say okay i hear you i don't like it and i'm not okay with what you're saying what do you need really what is exactly the the point so you you, you can you can argue okay well uh, it, it's not so easy when you are in the middle of your job and this guy comes to you and he starts shouting and everything true it's not easy. Hence, you know, the training, uh, the first times it's gonna be uh, more difficult, but the more you train yourself and you understand what you need to protect yourself, this is where you're gonna be in a much better position to move on in such a situation. And the most important thing is that you don't get into this circle of thinking again and again about the the incident and say okay well what a, what a lousy guy da 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 and you keep repeating things the whole day that is not good for you because it is impacting you then and most probably he has already forgotten about the way he talked to you because very often this is the way it happens it's like i'm going all emotions but i'm not even thinking it further and I'm not even thinking about the impact that I have on the people, the ripple effect that I'm creating. So does it make sense? At least to me, but seeing everyone noted, I guess it does. And for sure, Ivana is gonna, is gonna come back. Zoe has a question, so feel free to open the mic. I know we are almost over, so we're gonna get 
five more minutes. If yes, it's just a quick okay. follow-up. So thank you for your answer. I found it very helpful. I was wondering on a practical note, would you recommend leaving from a fight which is happening? Like, let's say the boss is like flipping out on you. Do you want to like leave the room, just sit down and quietly assess um, the situation like you suggested and then coming back later and like yourself saying, hey, so here's what I got from the situation. I think what you meant or what you feel is this, this and that. Am I correct in interpreting things like this? Do you think it's a good idea or do you think this would make the other person um, like close up, sh like shut off and maybe make the situation worse? Uh, the, the, the best option is obviously to, uh, one of the things that is important is somebody who's, uh, who's not speaking okay, I mean, uh, in a correct manner to you, to say, okay, I hear you, but I'm not okay with the way you're expressing it. And, and this is something that you're just putting there. You know, it's like in, in the system of your relation, you need to put that. It's like, okay, I hear what you're saying. I'm not okay with the way you're saying it. And you can leave it there. Uh, now, you protect yourself then, you know, and then you can come back later and talk with the person, obviously. Uh, I am always um, a supporter of the, of saying what I, what I feel in a, in a, in a reasonable way. That is, I'm not okay with you talking to me like this. So that, I hear you, but I'm not okay with the way you express, you express it. So, and, th and this is it. So maybe the person is gonna be even more upset or whatever, but just the fact of putting this very often makes the person realize that she's gone off boundaries. Because that's really, I mean, when you have people who are, you know, in French we say, go up in the towers, right? In Monde dans les tours. Uh, who go up, uh, up this way so quickly are people that are just letting themselves totally carried by their uh, their amygdala and their their emotions and everything. And two minutes later, they've already forgotten about it. But the disaster they have caused around them emotionally is awful. You're welcome. Thanks a lot, Carol. I'm going to come back closer so that I'm sure you can hear me. Thanks a lot. Is there one final question? Yes, and so thanks a lot. Thanks, uh, really. Um, I think it was very useful and um, we got some practical tips as well. So, if you have one more minute or one tool you would like to share, one more practical tool, Carol, because we got the um, top message in a meeting, like expressing the, we got the gratitude journal from last webinar and also the dressing, like the micro technique. Is there one last that you can share that you can think of or that's already a lot of tools, but I'm just wondering. I like the mantra. Find your proper mantra and keep it somewhere in, in your mind. That I love it. <laughs> okay, next time we're gonna all share our mantra. <laughs> there you go. It's something we can share. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Great. Well, it was great seeing you all, and uh, I hope you, we we had uh, enough uh, feedback and uh, your questions were all asked. I mean, obviously, the, I'm conscious that the time is quite short. Uh, unfortunately, I have to jump on another call uh, in less than 30 minutes. But uh, you know, obviously, you can you can raise uh, any question, and if you you need another session, whatever, we will find uh, a way to organize that if that makes sense. Um, I mean, she with Carol, basically, she's she's the boss. <laughs> and I swear, I'm not yelling at everyone. I'm hoping I'm not. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot, Carol. Take time for yourself before uh, this meeting, please. And yeah, on behalf of everyone here, just a 
very well and thank you. Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.